Dave Curtis, President and CEO of Viking Air Limited. We're sitting here on a storied airplane that has had a nice long history that your company is now bringing back into production. Kind of tell us the history of how you came to be involved with this project. Well, for in probably you know two decades, Viking was a major supplier to de Havilland on spares and product support for the airplane. Not only the Twin Otter, but the Beaver and the Otter. And so we were pretty knowledgeable on it. And over the years, I would travel to trade shows and operators conferences. And I can't count the number of times I heard an operator stand up and say, gee, de Havilland, why don't you put the Twin Otter back into production? So that seed was planted with me in the mid 90s. And as our relationship with Bombardier, who owned the type design for uh, the Twin Otter and the other lines, as our relationship grew and we became a pretty important supplier to them, the question was asked one day, hey, would you sell the product line? The answer was, we would think about it. So it took a little while, a year of discussions and then probably another eight months of contract negotiation. And so we closed that in 2005. And then, you know, it took a bit from a regulatory perspective to transfer all the type design. It was a, from a Canadian perspective, it was the largest transfer of intellectual property from a type certificate. There were seven aircraft involved from the chipmunk right up to the Dash 7. So that took about six months. And that happened in February of 06. In uh, September of 06, we held an operators conference and said, OK, if we build it, will you buy it? That quickly turned into, I think we got 18 orders out of the gate and officially started cutting metal in March of 2007 and got our type certificate for the new 400 in July of 2010. Took a little longer than we expected, but you know, what doesn't in this industry? So now we've got a regular production program going. We're delivering it one a month now and we've got a healthy backlog and you know, we're gonna continue the legacy. What is it that is different about this airplane than was on the original Twin Otters? The first thing we had to do was there was probably about 800 part numbers that were obsolescent. We couldn't get them. So we had to jump in and redesign those. And, and some of them were mostly in vendor supplied you know, parts. And so we took those opportunities to improve the product, take something that's current in design. I think the biggest single change is the flight deck has a Honeywell Apex integrated avionics system in it. You know, that's brought the airplane into this century and certainly will be supportable for the next 20, 25 years. The other thing is, is all the doors, all of the non-flight critical structural are all carbon fiber. We needed to really try and drive the empty weight of the aircraft down. From the outside, you wouldn't be able to tell a difference other than if the keen eye, and we've had some of those folks through here recently, you'll see all the control surface sensors for the flight data recorder and for the integrated flight deck. It needs to know where your control surfaces are. So you walk around and there's a lot of Twin Otter experts out there. And so they're picking that kind of stuff up. But otherwise, it's a Twin Otter. What's the airplane like to fly? You know, it, that's I think the beauty of it. It is a truly well-balanced machine. I don't know how many times I've heard guys that are, you know, flying 747s and corporate stuff and the best flying they ever had was a Twin Otter on floats. What kinds of missions are your customers using the airplane for? You know, it's all over the place. You know, the Peruvian Air Force, who was a legacy Twin Otter operator, they're our biggest customer. They bought 12. They're going to go on floats. They're going to be used on the Amazon and up in the, uh, you know, in the Andes, up high strips. We've got... Um, commercial operators, you know, in the Maldives on floats. We've got uh, commuter carriers, you know, Air Seychelles took delivery of one. We've got a corporate machine, which we're sitting on right now, that's going to Australia. We have United Arab Emirates, they've ordered 10. It's a varied mix of customers. You said you had 18 orders out of the box. What's your order book like now? It's, um, sitting at 68 is our backlog. We're hitting one a month. We're going to ramp to one every three weeks over the course of the next six months. And then we're going to probably stabilize there and see how what the market's going to do. But we have enough, you know, to dig our teeth into it and get our, get our program stabilized and get all the bugs out of it. Any uh, plans on doing some of the other old De Havilland line? Certainly we've talked about it, but there's no serious plans. You know, we've bitten off a lot. 
with this program. We need to make sure it's right. You know, we've got customer acceptance. Being on a new aircraft manufacturer is not for the faint of heart. And so we need to make sure we're doing that right before we tackle anything else. Dave, thanks very much for taking some time to talk with us on Aero TV. My pleasure. Thanks. Aero TV is brought to you by... Abadine is the brand of choice for pilots who want innovative, easy-to-use avionics. And the new IFD 540 GPS Navcom sets a new standard for simplicity in communication and LPV navigation. As a slide-in replacement for existing 530 series navigators, and with a highly intuitive touchscreen control, the IFD 540 makes it much easier to access the information you want when you want it, reducing head downtime and making flying more enjoyable. Finally, you have a choice, and the choice is easy. Avidine.